Hey, I'm Paul Hunter in um, Port-au-Prince, here to take your questions and comments on uh, what's going on in Haiti these days, uh, taking the questions on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, we've got about 20 minutes, I think, so uh, get them in while you can. Um, I'm going to give you just a little bit of lay of the land before we get started to let you know where we are. We're kind of uh, on a deck, obviously, in, almost in downtown Port-au-Prince. Um, the downtown and the presidential palace, which has been kind of the focal point of a lot of the demonstrations uh, lately, besides what played out on the streets, of course, is down that way. After the earthquake, it's that downtown section that we spent a lot of time at because um, it was pretty much flattened. It was awful. Further that way, you probably can't see it, but there's mountains off on the uh, sort of other side of the city. Uh, we were there yesterday, actually, uh, to a, uh, a nine-year-old community called Canaan, nine years old because it was created after the earthquake. We went there back in uh, 2010 when they were first moving some of the displaced people uh, out to Canaan. And it was a small collection of ramshackle tin homes. Um, now it's like tens of thousands of people. It's a, it's a proper city, uh, uh, but problems persist nonetheless. We're doing a piece for air next Wednesday on the National that will include some of what's going on in Canaan. Uh, the epicenter of the earthquake was that way. I can almost see it from here. Uh, and then I see hills that you can't see. And on the other side of that is Jacmel, which many Canadians will be familiar with um, because that's the home of former Governor General uh, Michel Jean. We went there after the earthquake as well. It's about a three hour drive from here today on a, on a day with good traffic. I think it took us, I don't know, eight hours to get there uh, after the earthquake. Um, so that's sort of where we are. We're up the hills a little bit from the capital. We've been here uh, since Sunday. Classic circumstance that, you know, when we got here, the demonstrations uh, that brought us here had dissipated. People talked a lot about a, a pause happening so people could get their lives back in order, go out and get some food and some water because they've been locking themselves uh, indoors uh, throughout the demonstrations. Um, so life on the streets is pretty much back to normal here these days. Uh, but everybody kind of anticipates the anger uh, that led to those demonstrations is still here. So they will come back. Uh, it's just a question of when. But for now, it's sort of as it was uh, in Port-au-Prince. Blackberry Bill writes the first question uh, to us, which is, why are people so angry? And it's, I mean, the, the truth is there's no short answer. It's everything. Uh, it's largely driven right now by allegations of, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to characterize the degree of government corruption that is alleged uh, with the current uh, Haitian government. Uh, basically hundreds, many hundreds of millions of dollars that was part of a savings for Haiti in a deal struck with Venezuela to bring cheap oil to Haiti. And the savings from that cheap oil would go into infrastructure, uh, better roads, um, anything, rebuilding some of the many parts of Haiti that are still suffering uh, from damage after the earthquake, better schools, better everything. It didn't come to pass. We were at a, um, an overpass uh, on that part of town a couple of days ago uh, that was a part of uh, what demonstrators pointed us to as an example of the corruption, right? So it was budgeted at four and a half million dollars. Uh, we're told three and a half million has been spent. It's nothing. It is, I don't know, we, we walked it out. We got up on top of it and it was 30 meters end to end and it's nowhere near finished. There's no ramp up, no ramp down. I called it a bridge from nowhere to nowhere because that's basically what it is. A lot of these contracts uh, have been put out uh, on what they call a, a no-bid basis, which means the money just goes to somebody the government chose to give it to, goes the um, implication that it was friends of friends of friends. So everybody benefits except the Haitian people. People that we talk to here, they're just fed up, <laughs> right? Like it's one thing after another in this country. Sorry for the the, the venti rant kind of answer here, but this is what we're hearing from people. Like, problems go back before the earthquake. The earthquake came and they, it flattened everything and it just made, it, it, it made everything that was hard impossible, right? 
and then it's something else. And then came cholera, and then came fraudulent or allegedly fraudulent elections, and then came government misspending, and then came this, and then came that, and they're just tired of it. You know, somebody, I was chatting with somebody who went to the Dominican Republic uh, for the first time, the other half of this island, and saw, which also benefited from this oil, uh, cheap oil uh, program with Venezuela, and the person had never been there before, uh, adult, and sees proper roads and proper buildings and life. I said, why can't that happen here? Because of government corruption? This is the view that people tell us is driving them so into such fits of rage that they will demonstrate as we did, as we saw in the last couple of weeks. You know, we were downtown and looking at some of the damage from the demonstrations and um, we came across a family, their home had kind of been ravaged and burnt and destroyed effectively. And it had not even yet been rebuilt after the earthquake nine years later. And then it was a attacked, if that's the right word, by, in, during the demonstrations, and they lost everything that they had had since, just because it kind of got out of control, the demonstrations. And they said what is obvious, which is, we're victims all over again. Their life hadn't really got any better, and now it got worse. I mean, so all these things combined is what has people enraged here, to the point where like something's got to be done. That's that's what led to the uh, to the demonstrations. That's to Blackberry Bill. That's that's what's fueling the anger. It's all of it. They're just fed up. Forgive me because it's very sunny here, and it's going to be hard to see the questions. So I'm going to take this screen off. It is very hard to read through the glare. My goodness, I can't even read. Hang on one second here. Let's see if we can read this. Okay, forgive me. The glare is really bad. Bear with me. Have we got a way to get through the glare, Jay? Well, I can, I can read my phone. Yeah. Can you? Hang on one second here. Jay, you want to, can you come here and help? I've got my cameraman, Jay Burles, who gets me through so many uh, troubles here. This is really bad. So see if you can see any of them. Bear with me. Can you read it to me? Yeah, Jordan Chizowski on Facebook asks, isn't there a good chance what is happening to Haiti will happen to Venezuela if the American Canadian coup is successful? Seeing as this was an American regime that was artificially propped up in Haiti that is now collapsing. Wow. <laughs> no, no easy answer to that question. Uh, so I, I'm, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna punt that one because the, the problem, well, in, only in a sense that the problem has been um, that no one has answers to the, to the greater problem. Um, I, I've even been asking you know, demonstrators, what is your way out on this? Um, and they don't have one uh, because they've seen various people come and go, various outside governments try to help and fail. Um, in fact, for the first time in our experience, we've been to Haiti many times in the last 10 years, uh, for the first time in our experience, we didn't find friendliness toward us everywhere because there are there is a lot of finger pointing not not to Canada really it's to, to the US as when I mean, they burned the flag a couple of weeks ago here during those demonstrations you, you never would see that before um, but the concern has been that a lot of the aid money that came into Haiti was ended up in American organizations paying for the bureaucracy of the charities and, and what have you and that uh, w one of the answers to the problems is to make sure that the money is spent on the ground in Haiti. Uh, you do see evidence of some of that. Uh, a lot of people have been asking, was Canadian aid money wasted, uh, be it from the government or from individual donors? No short answer to that either. But you do see lots of evidence where the money has gone to good 
It's almost like you've got to spend a lot to get a little good, you know what I mean? Um, but people here see, they certainly point fingers at America and say too much of the aid money didn't make it onto these shores, and that is another annoyance uh, for them. That, that definitely does not answer the Venezuela question, um, but and the problem here is that I cannot see my screen. So hang on, I'm trying hard to do this. Yeah, it's, if, if you I, we'll figure this out. When you have your phone in the shadow, it's a lot easier to read, right? So, Manuel Michel on Facebook asks, from your vantage point, do you see any physical markers or urban infrastructure that makes you think that Haiti is moving forward? Okay, good question. Is I was sort of hinting at that in the last one. Um, any evidence that Haiti is moving forward? Yes. I mean, we, on that we, the drive we took out to Canaan yesterday, for example, uh, I was noticing a lot of solar panel streetlights. One of the big issues here is no electricity on top of, uh, you know, not enough clean water, not enough jobs, not enough of all the basic tools um, for survival. Uh, one of them is not enough electricity. Um, in fact, when it gets dark here, it's not like it's pitch black. You see sp spots of light, but by and large, it's like it doesn't look like a city out there because there's not enough electricity to, to get around. Um, so solar powered street lamps is one example. Uh, of things you do see. There, it's like I say, there is, um, there is progress being made, but it is at such a slow pace. And again, it comes back to the government, you know, the, the, the uh, overpass that we were talking about. Um, I think they've been working on it since 2015. Uh, the, con the contractor came out to talk to us when we came to take a look at it. Um, 2015, four years. And it is, as I say, it's nowhere near finished. Um, but you do see evidence um, of a better place. And look, don't get me wrong, uh, relative to the days after 2010, for example, after the earthquake, I mean, it is night and day. They, they have cleaned up the place. We saw a pile of rubble when we were downtown. There are, you see rubble still, but it's not as if progress hasn't been made. I don't want to leave that impression. Um, they're getting there. Uh, I think what fuels the frustration is the pace uh, of the change and it's not nearly enough because people it's like this is our life you know one of the um, I'm gonna try to get to another question Jay sorry to keep pu pulling you this way uh, I was gonna dive in on something else but I'm gonna I'm gonna hit another question we'll make it work um, Darren Thompson asks on Facebook is there too much red tape involved in dispersing foreign funds red tape is another complicated <laughs> question here this gets back to corruption. We've, we've, um, what was the circumstance here? That we met a guy and they had imported fish that had to be kept on ice. It had, it couldn't get through the port. So it's sitting in containers at the port running into red tape. Is somebody not, you know, greasing palms is what people will uh, suggest. We ran into, you know, again, this was, uh, several years ago, um, but um, I think it was a Quebec company, certainly it was Canadians that were sending uh, fresh water in, and again, caught up uh, in red tape uh, at the port, and red tape was really just a euphemism for who are you gonna bribe, you know? Uh, everybody wants to be paid, and the person below that person wants to be paid, it's part of the culture, and it is a problem. Um, stuff does get through when you learn the way of the land, but then it brings us back to the corruption scandal that people are so angry about right now. It's a cycle of this stuff. It just, it's, it's, it just keeps going that way. And it, it frustrates not only Canadians who, who want to help and who send their donations in, but it frustrates everybody here who isn't in government, say the demonstrators. Jay. Ted Warren on Facebook asks, whatever happened to all of the money that was donated after the earthquake? Well, we've kind of dealt with some of that uh, in the sense that it helped. I mean, don't forget, a lot of that aid 
and we saw this uh, firsthand, was, was immediate. It was people who then needed medicine, who then needed water, who then needed shelter. So we talk about the town that was built outside of the city. We, you know, those donations that, that, that people uh, sent from Canada and around the world, and it was a massive outpouring, which, by the way, Haitians remain grateful for, saved lives. It saved lives. I saw it with my own eyes. Uh, so it wasn't wasted. It gets complicated when you get into then rebuilding. Progress is being made. But, you know, the Canadian government over, over time has been frustrated by it. But you can't, what's the other option, I guess, goes the next question. To simply walk away or to keep trying to find a way to get things to work and to make a difference. So people are trying. Shazad Awan on Facebook asks, what solutions do locals suggest generally? You know, I put that to somebody today. What, what solutions do people here suggest uh, generally? Don't judge, but they don't have one, right? I mean, the misery, hence the cyclical nature of this. Like I said, well, what about, you know, one of the opposition leaders? Is that what people want to, to replace the president? And there's no real plan, right? Nobody says, here, I've got the, I've got the magic bullet that is going to fix all these problems, right? Um, and that's what's so sad about it. Everybody, everybody agrees they don't want what it is right now because these lives are awful. Like, it is beyond the pale poverty, right? Um, they don't want that. They're fed up with it. This is their life. They want something better, but they don't have answers just what it is. So kind of a follow-up, Allison Lynn on Facebook asks, what are the protesters asking for the most? Right now what they're asking for the most is to get rid of uh, Jovenel Moise, the president, because that's who people blame for this corruption. It's one thing to say that it's been a, it's been a, a slow pace of recovery or a slow pace of, of, of getting out of the poverty, but it's something else when you see hundreds of millions of dollars that was supposed to speed up that process be diverted. It's all alleged. It's not proven. It's in my phone charger here. I'll get rid of that. Um, but that's where their anger is right now. It's aimed at him. I think the, to the earlier question about what's the way out, I think people see that as the beginning of the way out. Uh, they don't have the person who would go in and fix things, but they know that the guy in there right now, uh, in their view, is is not helping because of this government corruption, which I'll also add date, predates his time in office. This is, this is not a thing that has just emerged in terms of the allegations about corruption. It's not like it's just happened in the last uh, you know, year or two. This has been going on uh, for some time. Step one is to change uh, the president um, without knowing what step two is. You know, there's a lot of talk this week about the um, these, these so-called, uh, whatever, I want to call them mercenaries, but the eight uh, foreigners who were arrested here, five of them American, I think two Serbs, and actually one of them was uh, local Haitian. Um, nobody knows what they were, uh, what their mission was. They were found, for those who don't know, they were arrested. There were some automatic weapons found, uh, I think a, a professional grade drone, satellite phones. Uh, they, they were, I think, ex-Navy SEALs, I think one of them. Uh, what were they doing here? Because <laughs> the presumption is they were brought here at the behest of the government to maybe quell demonstrators in the streets. Uh, dem those same demonstrators will now point to what happened yesterday, which is that after they were arrested, instead of facing trial for uh, being here with these weapons, they were just sent back to America. So people are angry about that kind of stuff too, and they see that as evidence that something is, uh, something is amiss uh, in the presidential palace. Daniel Michelle asks on Facebook, how do they survive? Did you visit a home in Haiti and see how they live? Question uh, from Manuel Michelle. Manuel Michelle on Facebook, how do people survive? Did I visit uh, uh, homes after, afterward? I presume you're talking about the earthquake. Um, multiple uh, 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 visits did we make? I think you mean now. To now? Oh, survive the demonstrations. No, no, but how are people living? Oh, how are people living? Sorry about this, broken telephone. Um, that people here, again, it gets back to, it's, I'm going to back into this because it's an amazing country, right? Full of incredible people with a spirit that has not been broken 
uh, throughout all of this. Uh, how, I, I don't know, uh, you know. Uh, it can move you to tears sometimes when you, when you meet people who are so enthused about life while they're angry about how their government is being run and living, to answer the question, day to day, like truly. We met a guy, I, this would have been Sunday, our first day here. Um, and it's the things you don't think about, right? Without electricity, you don't have a fridge, right? And so without a fridge, that means every day you head out to somehow acquire uh, the sustenance to keep you and your family alive for that day. And then the day ends and you sleep and you wake up the next day and you do it again. And the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that. That's how you survive here on a day-to-day -day basis. Not everybody. There are, I'm not going to, again, say in the same way that you see progress after the earthquake. Um, it's not like everybody is poor. There are people who live, you know, a kind of Western life. The average daily income uh, in this country, though, is, you know, two dollars. You know, um, it doesn't mean there aren't people who are doing all right. But the, a, a lot of the people that we met living like the, the, the family we met uh, yesterday in a cinder block apartment that had been broken down by the earthquake and not fully rebuilt and then burnt again. Man, you, we went into their house and I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it's, it, it's awful, but they live day to day by getting out, finding enough food for that night. And that's sort of it, you know? Uh, Sean Wolven is asking, um, is Haiti more dangerous than the Paris riots and why, or, or the Paris, Paris protests? That's a good question. Uh, what was the person's name again? Um, sorry, Sean Wolven. Sean, Sean Wolven. Yeah. Um, is Haiti more dangerous than uh, Paris? Uh, I have not been to Paris during the uh, uh, strife that's been, that we've seen a lot of there uh, in the last many months. Um, and um, we got here just as the lull ended. So right now, we, we, we travel, when we travel around in Port-au-Prince, this week, we have armed security with us. We have uh, flak jackets and helmets in the back. Uh, not because there's anything necessarily unsafe on the streets right now. It's, as I say, it's sort of back to normal. But these things, they just burst out like that. And so you kind of have to be ready. Um, when we were downtown yesterday and in, into one of the streets where the thick of the demonstrations were last week, holy cow, man, it was like, like, it must, it was mayhem down there. The, 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 the burns, the, the busted windows, all that kind of stuff. Um, people were, people who live here were scared enough to lock themselves in their homes basically for 10 days. I mean, it was that bad. When we were contemplating coming here, to give you a sense, it was as the, the we, we didn't know that there was going to be a pause in the demonstrations. So we were, okay, what's the, what's the scene on the ground? At the time we were booking our flights, we didn't know how we were going to get out of the airport because it was cordoned. It was sort of, there were roads were all blockaded around the airport. And some of our intel was that what was happening when people were landing at the uh, Port-au-Prince airport, getting in their vehicles and driving off, they were then being followed and attacked and robbed as soon as you left the airport. So it was kind of like that. Seasoned veterans, and I, wrong way to put it because it's people we know who live here, say they'd never seen anything like it. Um, there's some, you know, then again, so it, which raises another interesting aspect to it all. Uh, what is the value of that, right? Uh, you throw rocks, you, you, you get angry, you fire guns in the air, um, and is that going to change the president's mind, right? But a result of those demonstrations is us being here right now and uh, CNN and the Miami Herald and the New York Times and, and others telling the stories that we've been telling this week. It's interesting with the lull in demonstrations. I was saying to Sylvia Thompson, the producer here, and well, and to Jay as well, uh, the other day, that in a sense, you know, we came down here thinking we were going to be covering the violence, and so we were quite kind of freaked out by it, right, because it seemed pretty out of control, uh, even with security guards. We get here, and it's not like that, so we think, okay, well, that's, 
that's less dangerous, so that's a good thing. So now what shall we do? Well, let's tell the stories of Haitians. Let's go and now that it's calm enough to drive around the streets, um, we, every day we've been here, we've gone out to talk to Haitians to put their stories on the air to tell Canada and the world uh, what the issues are to the degree the issues, getting back to the earlier questions, um, can even be boiled down because it's so, it's like the proverbial onion, you know, deal with one issue and there's another one right behind it and another and another and another and another. But it all comes back right now. I keep pointing toward the presidential palace. It all comes back right now to uh, the alleged corruption with the current government. Um, Dash Lee on Facebook is asking about, uh, about Canadians. Are they able to safely fly off the island? Are flights getting out now? Uh, yet another good question. Uh, Dash Lee uh, on Facebook, I think, asks about the Canadians that we heard a lot about. This was another factor in us coming down here, by the way. Interesting, uh, you know, getting back to progress Haiti has made since the earthquake. Tourism, for the first time in many, many, many years, has actually been kind of on the up and up lately. Um, and so w you had a number of uh, Canadians uh, prior to the demonstrations who were here for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, there's a lot of um, uh, sort of charitable work that goes on and pe people coming down and trying to do what they can still, uh, nine years after the earthquake, which is a good thing. Uh, good old Canadians doing their bit. Um, uh, and the other was tourism, which when I first heard that, I th having been down here multiple times in the last decade, I thought tourism uh, in Haiti? But yes, it is. And so people were trapped and they, the problem wasn't that they were under any personal in any personal danger, but it was the roads getting, you know, out from outside the city where the resort may be to, you know, the airport over there. You just couldn't get in. Same as I was talking about, um, uh, at one point, we did not have a way out of the airport when we were still back in, you know, Washington. Before we flew, we were trying to figure out how we're going to get safely out of the airport because of the cordoned off road or blocked, blockaded roads. Uh, likewise for the Canadians, some were helicoptered in. Uh, we were seeing some helicopters go by um, ourselves. Uh, we were wondering if, if that was Canadians in that. We met some at the airport uh, who were not delayed. They were leaving early in case the demonstrations uh, kicked back up. But they said they were, they were happy. They were here doing charitable work. And they said they were fine, right? And they, they were in no threat it was just a matter of getting uh, to the airport. I, I'll, I'll just say that it's, it's interesting too, I had a lot of feedback on some of the stuff we did about how it's great to hear from Haitians and you know, um, the, 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 so, the so-called poor Canadians who were stuck, but the real problem is Haitians. Fair point. Um, and so those are the stories that we've been focusing on. Um, but in fairness to the Canadians who were marooned, uh, even though you weren't in any personal danger, uh, it's pretty dodgy when you don't know how you are going to get out of a foreign country, and that's the circumstance they were in uh, for a few days anyway. Short answer, uh, they're all out safe and sound. Okay, and our last question is uh, from Allison on Facebook. And she asks, is impeaching our president a realistic option? It makes sense to tackle this first. Is impeaching the president a realistic option. It makes sense to tackle, I presume, the issues uh, uh, surrounding it first. Um, again, it's a complicated one, right, because they, they don't have the way out. Uh, we met a guy, um, Gilbert Mirambeau, uh, who is a Haitian filmmaker uh, who, as it turns out, spends some time in Montreal. I think his mom lives there. Um, he is the guy who's credited with kind of kickstarting this movement. Uh, he made, you can Google this, he did a, tweeted out a photo of himself blindfolded holding the sign that reads, where is the money? Uh, meaning, where is all this money that was lost to corruption? Uh, you'll see the term Petrocaribe a lot if you read about uh, the, the uprisings in, in Haiti. Petrocaribe is the name of the group with the uh, cheap oil from uh, Venezuela. Um, so he was, there was one single person who was just mad as heck and doesn't want to take it anymore. So he just did this. Uh, it kind of caught fire. I think it was a hip hop artist, a, uh, Jay, a, a Haitian, who then did his own version of that with the hashtag Petro Caribe Challenge, right? It caught fire. And this is what spawned this sort of 
movement, or at least this is where credit is being given, to, to tell everybody, it's the great power of social media now, here we are uh, communicating, sort of, on social media, uh, the way this, these demonstrations have, have been fueled is because everybody, because of their smartphones, they see the hashtag and they see this, and yeah, my neighbor's angry about this, and have you heard about this, and did you see this, and look at this, and boom, next thing you know, everybody is, is, is sort of out there saying, we can do this. So Gilbert Mirambeau um, sees this as a moment for Haiti. You've got a young population, more than half the population, I think, is, uh, is like under 30 at this point. Uh, everybody sees their life ahead of them. Now, if not now, then when? They don't have the what. They don't have, here's the, here's the answer to it all. But they know the status quo has got them nowhere. In fact, arguably, it's digging them even deeper in the hole. My apologies for the glare on the uh, iPhone. It made it complicated. Jay Burles, our fantastic cameraman, uh, was helping us out, uh, reading off mine. Um, I hope some of this has been informative. Um, it's a, it is a complicated uh, circumstance this country is in now, and it has been as long as I've been covering it, and I know my predecessors, and if you read the history books on this place, um, you'll learn all the ironies. The, you know, the, the, once the richest place in the Caribbean, and it, uh, it is what it is right now. So, uh, thanks for paying attention. And you can, I should have been saying this throughout, uh, you can follow this online on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. And uh, as I say, um, I hope it's been at least interesting. It's an amazing country full of incredible people. I love it here um, in spite of its challenges. Thanks.